Presenting William Dugdale's Secrets. This video could be considered to be a follow-up to Alexander Woe's presentation, The Freemasons Who Knew Where Shakespeare Is Really Buried. In it, he mentions William Dugdale's Antiquities of Warwickshire. Here are some interesting enigmas from the William Dugdale's book. Antiquities of Warwickshire, published in 1656. They refer to the monument in Stratford-upon-Avon. Let's do a bit trace of the page. Now let's count stuff. How many uppercase letters are there from here, the beginning of the paragraph? To the name Will. What number is the uppercase W? Next. How many letters are there from the beginning of line 11 to Will? Next. How many italic letters are there in the paragraph before the first S in Shakespeare? What number is the letter? Next, what is the gematria value of some of these two letters along the side note, the H and the I? What is the gematria sum of these two letters? What is the gematria sum of all uppercase B's and C's before the name? Act as if Will Shakespeare is a type of barrier. And what do these letters spell? Think the Wizard of Oz. Are they all the same number? And what do you think that means? I find it odd that we encounter the same number over and over again when near contemporaries or contemporaries wrote about Shakespeare. Here are more enigmas. For our first puzzle, we add the gematria values of all italic uppercase letters in the paragraph. We add this number as in one thing more. Then subtract this number. For our second puzzle, we add these Roman uppercase letter gematria values. These are all the values that are apart from the very first gematria puzzle. For number three, we add all the gematria values of the uppercase letters in this line. Line 11, remember. For our fourth puzzle, The note hides another number allusion. We add the gematria values of the uppercase letters in the box, the uppercase L and I.
and we add this number to that sum. The puzzle is in plain sight, as usual. We have to revert to the original scan to see some of the things that are not very visible in the bit trace. But before we go, we have to note that the 14th Roman word in the paragraph curiously happens to be the Roman number for 14. There are 34 italic letters in the paragraph, including the note. There are 34 lowercase Roman letter I's in the paragraph, and we do not count the ligatures. Were it not for this word, there would be 35 lowercase i's. These words just pop out at us, river and town. Let's take a closer look. Why does it look as if the lowercase i in river has been either carefully rubbed out or missing from the start? It is the only letter in this line which is missing. River is the 71st word in the paragraph. The uppercase R has a gematria value of 17. The rest of the sentence or line has 40 letters. Is this another 1740 allusion? This sentence, the line below it, has 40 letters in total. The uppercase letters in it have a gematria sum of 33. Add 33 to 40 to get 73, which has a Latin alphabet repeated count value of D, 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 4, D. We also have this pair of letters, the uppercase R and T. Could it be that the R stands for rosy? And the T represents a Tau cross, as in this 15th century crucifixion painting. Then is this an allusion to the Rosicrucians, the RT? If so, what do we make of these six letters? to the right of the R and the T. Well, the gematria sum of these letters is 109. In this case, we keep the lowercase v intact. But notice the v's. Two are larger than the third. We subtract the value of the smaller v from our total, 
109. Now the gematria sum is 89, a number we have seen over and over again in the authorship game. Eighty-nine is what we got from equation two earlier on. This looks familiar. V E R. And the word own is a possessive. And we have established that the uppercase T can be a tau cross. And what is the gematria value of this uppercase letter R? Let's combine the number with the words and the symbol. We have 17 ver tau cross own. We can read these as the ox plows, which is the Greek technique of writing from right to left, or left to right rather, then right to left in the lower line below it, and it's called boustrophodon. Now we have 17 ver own cross. Could it be that this means the person identified by the number 17 with the name Ver has a cross to bear? Here we have an enigmatic line. These three letters are perfectly split down the middle by the line from the lowercase p in Clopton to the lowercase h in the. What is the gematria sum of these three split letters? And this time, keep both lowercase v's intact because they are split by that line. Here are the clues to count things. First, bridge is repeated three times for another example of the Tria Sunt Omnia principle. Causi, which is causeway, is also repeated three times. There are three different types of numerals in the paragraph. We have seen the Roman number for 14, the Arabic Hindu number 7, and the English number 1. Another clue is the Roman number for 14 is the 14th Roman word in the paragraph. Henry VII is abbreviated using an Arabic Hindu number rather than the customary Roman numerals. Line 8, the one with river on it, has eight words. VER begins and ends line 8, an example of the rhetorical figure of a panalepsis in which the same word or letters begin and end a line. And of course, one thing more is another hint to add. Here are the puzzle solutions. The first counts and gematria sum are all 17. Then for equation one, we got 71, equation two, 89, 
3, 85, 4, 187, 5, 57, and 6, 89 again. 3 are multiples of the basic count number 17. And in a bizarre revelation, I noticed that when we add up the multipliers, 17 times 1, 17 times 5, 17 times 11, we get the number 17. Two are the digits sum number 89. One is the mirror number of 17. And one is 17 plus 40. Skeptics will need evidence that 17 is a valid clue. This may prove we are on the right track. How many words are there from Shakespeare to Hamlet's? Notice Hamlet is spelled with an uppercase H. Curiously, the number 17 connects Shakespeare with Hamlet's. And there are 39 Roman words from this word, one, to Hamlet's. Hamlet's, therefore, becomes the 40th word. Is the one thing more the hidden authorship secret? The last sentence is quite odd. One thing more in reference to this ancient town is observable, that I gave birth and sepulture to our late famous poet, Will Shakespeare, whose monument I have inserted in my discourse of the church. This sounds as if it was an afterthought, one thing more. This also sounds as if it was an afterthought, inserted. And this is strange. It gave birth and sepulture. Sepulture could be a reference to this verse from the Bible, Matthew 23, verse 7. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are unlike like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Is Dugdale implying the people who built the monument were hypocrites? And how is the monument unclean within? I believe Dugdale is explaining the motivation behind the monuments, construction by a group of hypocrites. They were like dead men inside, just like the monument. Their motivation, motivation rather, may have been as unclean as a charnel house. If Dugdale was referring to this verse, then it may contain a clue who built the monument. Scribes copy words written by other people. Pharisees rejected Christ's message and were protected 
by the Roman Emperor. Is Dugdale suggesting that the men who built the monument were hypocrites who earned their living by other men's words and were protected by the state? If so, then the monument would be as unclean as the charnel house it was built beside. And the hypocrites were as if they were dead inside. I believe Dugdale could not reveal more or he would have faced serious consequences. Sepulture is the 88th word in the paragraph and the 17th word in the sentence. In the Latin alphabet repeated count, 88 is T, 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 or 4T. Therefore, the word hides another 1740 allusion. But how can a town give birth to a person? Or was Dugdale alluding to the budding Shakespeare tourist industry in Stratford? If true, then this gives a reason for the repetition of bridges and causeways in the example of Parisologia. Bridges, causeways, and rivers connect towns. Fraternities and sororities also connect towns. If the man known as Shakespeare was a leader in what may have been called the 22 Brethren by John Anthony and other, as others claim, the sum of these numbers may be further evidence than the theory is correct. 14 plus 7 plus 1. That would mean the word bridge could allude to the 22 brethren, since it is the 33rd word in the paragraph. 33rd being one of the most mystical numbers in Christianity. It was the age at which Christ allegedly died. And there are 33 supposed degrees in Freemasonry. If these are true, then Dugdale was a member of the Rosicrucians and knew the writer known as Shakespeare was probably also a member. We got all of this from one paragraph. I find it odd that we encounter the same numbers over and over again when contemporaries and near contemporaries wrote about or published books by Shakespeare. They are found in the first folio. They are found in the sonnets. They are found in Venus and Adonis. They are found in Lucrece. They are found in poetry collections like the Belvedere or the Garden of the Muses. And Love's Martyr or Rosalind's Complaint. They are found in broadsheet ballads as I explained in A Mournful Ditty. And now we find them in Dugdale's book, The Antiquities of Warwickshire. This looks more and more like there was a stratagem among writers and publishers 
to hide the real identity of the man known as Shake Spear. Only one man could be identified by these ubiquitous numbers. Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. was Shakespeare. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.